Hello, my name is Zhang Xian in Chinese order. In the West, they call me Xian Zhang. I'm a conductor. I'm the principal guest conductor of BBC National Orchestra Wales. Uh, this time, very much looking forward to return to China with a fantastic orchestra from the UK. Hello, my name is Michael Garvey. I'm the director of the BBC National Orchestra and Chorus of Wales, and very much looking forward to working with Shen and the orchestra as we come and tour to China later on in December this year. It's really part of my wish that this tour would feature um, quite strongly Chinese artists, also Chinese young artists. That was, yeah. I think it's something I feel very passionate about and I would like to promote more. I'd say it's come and hear some amazing musicians play some of the most beautiful music in the world. So we're going to be playing Mozart, and we're going to be playing Vorjak and Shostakovich. Uh -huh. um, we're going to try and bring some Welsh music with us as well. Uh -huh to show the Chinese audience some of the music that we have back home in Wales. Well, I think the audience for a start, you know, the, the, I mean, clearly there's a, a really big and growing audience yeah. um, and lots of different ages as well, actually, which is really nice to see. We're, we're quite good in, in, in Wales, where the orchestra's from. We have a very big student audience, um, but uh, certainly in China, there's a really broad range of audiences. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the big things that we're looking forward to. The, the real major age difference in the audiences in the West and in China is actually the middle part. The middle part, in China, we have more, but we almost don't see any of them in the West. The, the majority of our, of our audience, for example, for a New Jersey symphony, our audience is, the main core is more senior. We're trying very hard to attract younger audience. The thing is, the children there in the States, they're very busy. Mm -hmm. So on the weekends, it's just very hard for them to come out and for, come to concerts. For us, back in, in the UK, we put on concerts very specifically for younger children. The pieces of music are shorter, they're not so long, so it doesn't matter if you kind of rustle around and you're fidgety. We often take music that you would have heard on television programmes or in films, uh, and often we'll have a presenter as well, so someone who stands on the stage and introduces the music to the audience as well. That mm -hmm. certainly helps younger people uh, understand what they're listening to, what to listen out for, mm -hmm. and where the music comes from. Thirty years ago to thirty-five, uh, twenty-five years ago, um, I remember I was going to the concert hall. I remember I didn't even get to see many concerts. Right now, if you come to any orchestra here in Beijing, there's so many orchestras yeah. here. How many are there? Eight or ten? Just in Beijing. Just in Beijing. Really? Yes, a lot. And also in terms of quality of playing, it, it's gone much, much, much higher. In the past, let's say ten years, mm -hmm. it's going like this. Okay. Very, we're, we're catching up very, very quickly. Now, these young Chinese players, they have studied uh, overseas in Germany, in the States, and then they come back. They, the level of playing is much, much, much higher. And they hire foreign players. It's, a, it's becoming a very major new force in, okay. in the classical music world. I, probably four or five years ago, as Shen said, I think the quality is really good. And I think a bit like they represent everything that China as a country represents. It's just very impressive. And the ability to, to take on um, the standards and the quality that you see in other parts of the in other parts of the world, China can do in its orchestras as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's, it's very evident that China's a real force in classical music nowadays. I suppose the way they play. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a German orchestra and uh, you hear them play Beethoven, for example, yeah, yeah. Um, they play it in a way that's very stylistically, almost like Beethoven would have heard it himself. Uh, what's the Chinese style? I think it's quite um, bold 
I think it's quite, um, not loud so much, but um, almost fierce in a good way, okay. in a positive way. Um, vibrant. Vibrant, that's, a, okay. that's the best word for it. We've now got the internet and, um, and we've got computers and, and we, we, we evolve all sorts of different ways of communicating, but we haven't evolved out of music. It has some ability to connect, I think, to our soul or our heart. And because of that, it might be old, but it's not irrelevant. It reminds me actually of a real story. I was touring in Holland and this taxi driver was supposed to drive me from The Hague to the airport in Amsterdam. And he was playing classical music channel. It was Mozart. So I was very impressed. I walked into the car and he was playing this. I said, why do you listen to this? He said, this is the only ch channel I listen to when I work. And when I listen to it, I feel calm and I have no stress. And this is the best channel. Once you give a listen, give a, a, just a taste and just look, two minutes to listen to something, you will be hooked. I think people always look for human connections or emotional ties or connections to something and that's actually what how music came into being it speaks of that of the connection and how other people would feel the same feeling when they hear this music that's the purpose of music and it's for that reason i i, I think it's gonna live forever